Hello, I welcome you to the foundation studies of metaphysics. Metaphysics simply means the study of life. It comes from two words, meta meaning beyond and physics meaning matter. So metaphysics is simply the spiritual study of life. We live in life and we need to ask ourselves, how did it all begin? Has life got a beginning? Has life got intention? Or did life just come about by the Darwin theory of the Big Bang and then everything started coming into form? If life came out from the Big Bang, has the Big Bang got intelligence and purpose, reasons for doing what it is doing? If yes, then that intelligence that runs through life is known as God. So our topic today is God. Just who is God or what is God? Is God a person sitting somewhere in the skies like some of us studied when we were children? We imagine him to be a white bearded old man with a big book recording all of our sins and our good deeds so that one day he will do probably a trial balance to see how you weigh on the scale of life. This is the master topic that you need to give great attention to. God. Just what is God? Besides the organized system of schools in our education system, the most organized body in the world today is religion. It gathers people week after week, time after time, to celebrate, to study, and to teach. At the heart of religion is the study of God. If we do not have a clear understanding of what God is, then all the studies in religion, or whatever faith you belong to, is lost. Even an atheist, that is one who does not believe in God, lives life and needs to understand this intelligent life that we choose to call God. Many people do not know anything about God besides what they were told as children or told in their churches by their pastors or in their mosques by their imams or spiritual leaders. Is it possible that God is much, much more than what you have thought it to be? So I invite you to this study. And for us to understand God, we need a definition that will also become the reference to all of the discussion. In all my research and search for the definition of God, I've come to realize that the African definition for God is the most appropriate. As an elder told me years ago, in the Ga language it states, Noni je bo obo, shi o walakano nyomboni. Meaning, what you did not create but your life depends on is God. If I did not create night and day, and my life depends on night and day, then night and day is God. Probably, that is why the African has great reverence for everything in life. And in the Ghana tradition, when a child is being outdoored in the ceremony, the prayer says, come and respect life. So that definition is most appropriate. Whatever intelligent happening is occurring around you that you did not set in motion and your life depends on that happening, that happening is God. For example, a water molecule is made up of two particles of hydrogen and one particle of oxygen atom. 
encoded within the hydrogen atom is a knowing that knows that two of itself must come together with an oxygen atom to form a water molecule. You did not set that knowing in motion. So that knowing coded in the atom is God. And primarily, this tells us right away that the intelligence that we choose to call God is within all of its creation. Let us consider night and day that we depend on. Without night and day, everything in life will perish. If it were all daytime, everything will dry up. And if it were all nighttime, everything will freeze to death. So for us to live, we need night and day. For us to have night and day, the earth on which we live right here, right now, is spinning at 1,000 miles an hour. Consider what that means. We know that the circumference of the earth is 24,000 miles. And in one day, it does one revolution meaning that the earth is spinning right here, right now, at 1,000 miles an hour. And for us to have the seasons, without which we will not survive, because if it were all summer, and we don't have spring, winter, and autumn, everything will perish. For us to have the seasons, the earth is also speeding around the sun at a speed of 67,000 miles an hour. You know what it is if you were driving at a speed of just 100 miles an hour, 200 miles an hour, and you feel giddy and tensed. And right here and right now, the Earth is spinning on its axis a thousand miles an hour and speeding round the sun at 67,000 miles an hour. The earth intelligently knows that it must also bend its north pole and south pole towards the sun as it spins on its axis and speeds around the sun. This coded intelligence is for a purpose, for the purpose that there must be life on this planet. And this knowing is not set in motion by you and I. This knowing, this intelligent energy is what we choose to call God. The earth we are living on is so massive that we do not feel this spinning and speeding. We see intelligent purpose or reason for the force of gravity of the earth. With its force of gravity, the earth keeps all of us together as one family. It keeps everything that goes up down. <laughs> That's interesting. That which pulls everything down is the same power that we may use to fly. Without the force of gravity, we will all be scattering into outer space. And yet, with the force of gravity, we are able to play games, basketball, football, and many other games. And by embracing the force of gravity, a whole village may fly in an aircraft. So you see, by embracing what supposedly pulls you down, you can fly to the fulfillment of your highest dream. This is the Earth in the company of the smaller planets that are orbiting the sun. Notice the size of the Earth. It is big. Now, this is the Earth in the company of the other bigger planets that are orbiting the sun. You may now notice how small the Earth is. And this is the Earth in the company of all the planets that are orbiting the sun, compare the size of the earth now to the sun. And a perfect intelligence is coded in the sun that it uses its huge magnetic force to hold all the planets in their places.
so that they do not scatter into outer space, into nothingness. We realize that there is an exact purpose, order, law running through all of the universe. And the sun that we see is just one of the small stars in the Milky Way galaxy. The Milky Way galaxy is a group of stars that you see in the sky every night, including our sun and the entire solar system. So the entire solar system is just one of the star families that you see in the sky. And some of the stars you see in the sky are much, much bigger than our sun. This is our sun compared to other stars in the Milky Way galaxy. It's almost like a drop of water in the entire ocean. Filled with the intelligence that we choose to call God. Today, scientists, knowing the sizes of the heavenly bodies and their paths and speeds of movement, can predict with precision when an eclipse will occur. From these studies, we know that our Milky Way galaxy contains over 400 billion stars, or call them burning suns and spans across a distance of about a hundred thousand light years. Meaning, if you were traveling at a speed of 11 million 160 miles a second, it will take you hundred thousand years. Pause and contemplate on the size of the Milky Way galaxy. And this intelligent, purposeful energy we choose to call God is present in every fiber and atom of the Milky Way galaxy. And science has further discovered that there are over 100 billion galaxies in the universe with huge intergalactic spaces between them. So we know that the universe we are living in is huge, massive, infinite, ever-growing, filled with intelligent, purposeful power. It is a law unto itself. We see orderliness in every fiber of the universe. This intelligent, purposeful law, order, absolute reason, energy of the universe is what we choose to call God. In the Akan language, we have a statement that obia nchre abofra nyami, meaning that God is self-evident that you must know God intuitively and by your ordinary perceptions. When you wake up from your tent in the desert, you will know what animal passed by by their footprints. We see the footprints of intelligence in every atom of life. Hence, we conclude that God is present in every atom of life. It is for this that the Christian Bible stated that we live, move, and have our being in God. So we see perfect intelligence, law, order, and purpose filling every part of the universe. When we consider the human intelligence alone in the manufacturing of products such as computers, mobile phone, and communication equipment, aeroplanes, cars, you come to agree that we come from an awesome intelligent field and the intelligence of humans are increasing moment by moment. When we consider the intelligence in ants, one of the smallest creeping creatures on the earth, that is a marvel to observe. The ant hill, by ratio, is by far the tallest building on the earth. When you compare the size of the ant in the tallest ant hill and the height of humans 
in the tallest building on the earth, you will agree that the ant hill is the tallest building on the earth by ratio. What wisdom, what intelligence has coded itself in the ants that they know how to build such marvel? And when you break an ant hill and you observe the cubicles of rooms, uh, recreation centers call it in their building, you will agree that an awesome intelligence is propelling and guiding the ants. What wisdom is there coded in the ants that make them know that there are breadcrumbs on your table and they travel miles to come for that food? I believe it will be for this reason that the Christian Bible advised, go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways and be wise. Also, birds fly from land to land without navigation equipment. The same intelligence guides them. Fishes know their places. Foxes know their places. Everything in life is in their perfect place, all coded and guided by the same intelligence. From these scientific observations of the things around us, we realize that we are living in a universe that is coded with perfect intelligence, law, order, and purpose. And God is truly omnipotent, meaning he is the all power and the only power. And God is truly omnipresent, meaning he is the presence within all things, in the past, present, in the future, and in all places and spaces. And God is truly omniscient, meaning he is the wisdom intelligence within all of life. This perfect law, intelligence, order, and purpose that runs through all of life is known by different names in different cultures, traditions, and religions. Among the Ghana tribe in Ghana, it is known as Nyongbo, and often called Ata Na Nyongbo. Ata meaning father, Na meaning mother, Nyongbo means visitor of the dawn. Father, mother, visitor of the dawn. The silent power that quickens itself in you. The power you cannot touch, but it is still there. So it is known as the visitor of the dawn, the visiting intelligence, wisdom, power, that comes from within. Among the Akans, this power presence is known as Onyami, meaning that which satisfies. Often also called Nyankopong in the Akan, meaning big friend. So God is seen as a personal companion present in us as us beyond us as a friend, but a very big, huge, awesome, intelligent friend, a partner with life, in life, and of life. Among the Ewes, God is known as Mahu, meaning the Almighty One, sometimes also called Se, meaning the Supreme One. In the Yoruba tribe of Nigeria, God is known as Chineke, the Maker, or the creator. And God is also known as Elemi, that is the owner of life. These speak of the personal way in which the African knows God. When we come to organized religions, starting with Christianity, in the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 6, this is what it says about God, that there is only one God, the Father of all, who is above all, within all, and through all of life. So we see the unity of God with the scientific facts that this intelligence that we choose to call God is within the very fabric of life. Again, in the book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 28, it says that we live, move, and have our being in God. 
So your very presence is God. It is God. It can only be God. And only God can happen as your life. Respect the life you are. This clearly teaches us that you are linked with the absolute intelligence of the universe. And that is why we keep coming out with one invention after the other. The awesomeness of the intelligent universe is coming through our lives as our lives. In Hinduism, one of the religions of the East, God is known as Brahman. The unmanifest beyond all the senses and beyond all thoughts. Infinite in form is God. He is the doer of all good. He is forever tranquil. He is immortal. He is one without beginning, middle or end. He is all pervading. He is infinite wisdom and he is bliss. Again in Hindu scripture is recorded the nature of God, Brahman. Filled with Brahman are the things we see. Filled with Brahman are the things we see not. From out of Brahman floweth all that is. This is clearly teaching that Brahman, as they call God, is the source of all life, is the source of everything seen and unseen. The Bhagavad Gita, one of the main holy books of the Hindus, called God by the name Krishna. And Krishna said, I am the wisdom of the wise. Anything that anybody worships, it is me that they worship. So here God is saying, that he is the source of all things, the wisdom, the intelligence, the purpose, and the order in all things. And that when you worship God by any name or by any sound, you are worshiping Krishna. Again, in the Christian Bible, in the book of John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, we read that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Here, God is described as the Word, meaning the active intelligent force. When we speak the Word, actions follow. Again, in the same Christian Bible, in the book of John, chapter 1, verse 4, it reads that God is light. In Him, there is no darkness at all. One other religion of the East is Taoism. And this is what it says about God. Something there is whose veiled creation was before the earth or sky began to be, so silent, so aloof, and so alone. It changes not, nor fails, but touches all. Conceive it as the mother of the world. I do not know its name. A name for it is Wei. Pressed for designation, I call it Great. Great means outgoing, outgoing, far-reaching, far-reaching, return. In that scriptural reading is a clear awareness that God is the Alpha and the Omega. In the Quran, the holy book in Islam, in Surah 19, verses 93 to 94, God is described as the all knower and it states every single one in the heavens and on the earth is a servant of God and that God encompasses everything and everyone in the universe meaning that in the unseen world as well as the seen the power we choose to call God is present again in the same glorious Quran the Prophet Muhammad, peace be unto him, stated, Your God is one God, there is no other God save him. Meaning that this one power that was is the only power of all things. And in fact, God is the very power of your life. Just as the power behind the wave is the ocean, the power behind your very life is God. 
So come to the spiritual awareness that it is God. It can only be God. And only God can happen as your life. Make that your life affirmation and live with it. Then you come to the realization that nothing can harm you because God cannot harm itself as you. This will lift up your consciousness, expand your psyche, and you are impregnable, except by the good that God is in you and as you. We realize from all of the scriptural texts that all religions agree that life started from an intelligent source. Call it by the scientific name Big Bang. But this Big Bang had intelligence, order, purpose, reason for doing things. And this intelligent energy of life is called God. And that we all live, move, and have our being in God. In conclusion, I say that God is not a person. God is the infinite intelligence within all of life that constitutes life itself. So there's no God and something else. There is God as all things. The creator and the created are one. When love speaks, the world hears. Love is the energy you can feel and the power that created the universe. If you have felt love before, then you already hold the secret to creation. In this movie, discover how to potentize the love you feel by a million times, and you can heal your life and create everything you want. Use the power of love to heal and bless those you care about. Center of love, the power you've always had and not known. Get it now on DVD. Ethereum Mission, the Church for Spiritual Empowerment presents Foundation Series to Enlightenment. The love of God is the beginning of wisdom. Ground yourself with the spiritual truth that will set you free with the Foundation Series to Enlightenment providing you with the in-depth knowledge of who and what God is, who you are as a divine idea of the universe, and how to conquer your internal demons and have inner peace. And then we present you with the study of the true living Jesus, six powerful lessons with spiritual practices on four DVDs. Get your full set now, available on DVD.